what is going on it's suck and i am back with a brand new video on super duper tech and in today's video i'll be showing you the results that i got when throwing a number of different benchmarking tests at the 2023 m3 powered imac also, we are on the road to 5,000 subscribers, so if you are new around here, then I must ask you to hit the subscribe button, clicking the bell to be notified of when a new video goes live. But without any further ado, let's hit the titles. So first things first, the spec for the model that I'm testing in this video is the mid-spec model, which comes with the M3 chip, which has an 8-core CPU, a 10-core GPU, 8 gigabytes of unified memory, along with 256 gigabytes of SSD-based storage. I've already tested the entry model with its 8-core CPU and 8-core GPU, so I'll leave that link down below. But enough about that let's start testing the first benchmarking application which i ran on this imac was geekbench 4. now geekbench is good as it runs several different tests and algorithms and depending on how it's performed and how long it took to perform them it will then give a score accordingly so for this test i got a single core score of 7679 and a multi-core score of 31937 I also performed Geekbench 4's graphics test, testing the GPU found in this M3 chip. Now it's worth noting that this is not the entry model which comes with an 8-core GPU, this is a slightly higher spec model which comes with a 10-core GPU. Now when running the OpenCL test through Geekbench 4, I got a score of 125,370, and when running Geekbench's Metal Compute test, I got a score of 113,822. The next testing application that I ran was once again from Geekbench, but this time from their slightly newer version, Geekbench 5, which has an increased amount of tests which are designed to further tax the machine when compared to Geekbench 4. Once again, Geekbench 5 scores based on performance and the time taken to complete those tests. So when testing the CPU's performance, I got a single core score of 1700 and a multi-core score of 8085. Again, I tested the 10-core GPU in this M3 chip to see how it would perform. Now, when running the OpenCL compute test, I got a score of 30,133. And when running the Metal compute test, I got a score of 33,125. The next test I ran was once again from Geekbench, but this time from the newest set of tests found in Geekbench 6. Now once again, when running the CPU test, I got a single core score of 3,045 with a multi-core score of 11,603. Running the Geekbench 6 compute test, I got an OpenCL score of 30,319 and when testing the compute performance through Metal, I got a score of 47,318. So sticking to the trend of testing the CPU, I then wanted to run a number of different Cinebench versions. So starting off with Cinebench R20, with this test I got a score of 2,632. I then ran Cinebench R23. Now Cinebench is a good benchmarking program as it tests each individual core and then gives us a score with them all combined. It will then give us a single and multi-core score and then works out the ratio between them. The higher the ratio, the better the performing CPU. So when running Cinebench R23, I got a single core score of 1893 and a multi-core score of 9557 which indeed gives us a ratio of 5.05. The next test I ran was once again from Cinebench, but this time from their newest set of tests, found in Cinebench 2024. So when running this test, I got a single core score of 134, a multi-core score of 600, which indeed gives us a ratio of 4.5. I then wanted to test the performance of this 10-core GPU in this iMac. Now, when running the 3 d Mark Wildlife test, I got a maxed-out score with it also scoring 60 frames per second on average. 
So I then ran the wildlife stress test once again from 3D Mark. And for this test, I got a high score of 10,020 and a low score of 10,020, which is something I had come to expect given the iMac with the 8 core GPU also scored 10,020 on both the high and lower aspects of this test. So I then ran the wildlife extreme test. Now when running this test, I got a score of 8,018 with an average frame rate of 48 frames per second. And when running the Wildlife Extreme Stress Test, I got a high score of 8,029 with a low score of 7,921. So I then ran another test from 3D Mark, this time the Solar Bay test. Now for this test, I got a score of 12,827 with an average frame rate of 48.8 frames per second. And once again, I ran the solar based stress test from 3D Mark. And when running this test, I got a high score of 12,811 and a low score of 12,734, which clearly goes to show that the additional fan in this iMac over the entry model is doing a much better job at keeping this chip cool. As with the entry model, when running the wildlife extreme stress test, the lowest score I got was 4,902, Whereas with this model, the lowest I got was 7,921. There is clearly a night and day performance difference between these two models, and it's only because of the fan. The next test I ran was NovaBench 2. Now, NovaBench is a good general benchmark as it tests all aspects of the machine from the CPU and GPU, along with other aspects like the system memory and the system storage. So when running this test, I got a score of 2,109. I then ran a number of disk speed tests testing the SSD's performance in this iMac. Now when using the Blackmagic disk speed test, the highest write speeds I got was 1,706.3 megabytes per second, and the highest read speeds I got was 1,601.4 megabytes per second. And when running the Aja system speed test, the highest write speed I got was 2,360 megabytes per second, and I also got read speeds of 1,678 megabytes per second. I then ran a Wi-Fi speed test and got download speeds of 462 megabits per second and upload speeds of 97.1 megabits per second. I then ran GFX Bench Metal. Now GFX Bench runs a number of different tests which range from both on-screen and off-screen which vary in higher and lower levels of intensity. Now I have calculated the average for both of these categories but I will show you each individual result. So the average I got for the higher intensive task was 219.76 frames per second, whereas for the lower, I got a higher average of 260.77 frames per second. The next test I ran was the V-Ray test, and when running this test, I got a score of 6,388. So sticking to the trend of testing the GPU portion of this iMac, I then ran a number of tests from Unigen, the first of these being their Heaven benchmark test. Now when running this test at 2240 by 1260, I got an average frame rate of 60.1 frames per second with a score of 1514. I then lowered the resolution to full HD, that's 1920 by 1080, and ran at this Heaven benchmark once again. Now, when running the test at this resolution, I got an average frame rate of 81.1 frames per second, with a score of 2044. And just so we can draw a comparison between the iMac and those other MacBook Pro models which come with the M3 chip, I then decided to lower the resolution to 1440 by 900. Now when running this test at this resolution, I got an average frame rate of 116.9 frames per second with a score of 2944. The next test I ran was once again from Unigen, but this time I ran their Valley benchmark. Now when running this test at 2240, by 1260, I got an average frame rate of 70.4 frames per second with a score of 2945. And when the resolution was lowered to Full HD 1920 by 1080, I got an average frame rate of 90.9 frames per second with a score of 3801. 
and once again so that we can compare to the other models with the m3 chip i lowered to 1440 by 900. now at this resolution i got an average frame rate of 112.2 frames per second with a score of 4695. I then ran the Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark, starting off with this IMAX native resolution of 4480 by 2520 keeping the graphic settings to medium, I got an average frame rate of 10 frames per second with a score of 2266. I then lowered the resolution to 3840 by 2160 keeping the graphic settings to medium I got an average frame rate of 13 frames per second with a score of 2382. I once again lowered the resolution down to full HD that's 1920 by 1080 and when running at this resolution I got an average frame rate of 41 frames per second with a score of 6512. I then lowered the resolution down to 1280 by 720 and when running this benchmark at this resolution I got an average frame rate of 67 frames per second with a score of 10303. I also ran the Antutu HTML browser benchmark and when running this test I got a score of 90590. I then ran the speedometer 2.0 test and when running this test I got a score of 592. I then exported some video footage to H.264 at both Full HD and 4K resolutions using Final Cut Pro with background rendering turned off. So the time taken to export the Full HD project was 46 seconds whereas as expected it took a little longer to export the 4K project with it taking 2 minutes and 52 seconds to export. I then rendered the classroom scene through Blender using the CPU. Now when using the CPU on this iMac, it took 11 minutes and 21 seconds to complete, whereas when it comes to using the GPU, it did this much faster, with it taking 2 minutes and 20 seconds to complete this. I then exported the BMW scene using the CPU, and it took 4 minutes and 59 seconds to export this, but when using the GPU to render this scene, it took 1 minute and 2 seconds to complete. Complete. And when running Blender 4.0 to render the classroom scene using the CPU, it was much faster taking 8 minutes and 33 seconds to complete. Whereas when it comes to using the GPU, it would not complete this test. In fact, it said that it had run out of system memory. So when it comes to this iMac, like the entry MacBook Pro with its M3 chip with 8GB of unified memory, you may very well want to increase the amount of unified memory you have with your iMac as 8GB, especially if you're doing anything like Blender on your machine, simply will not cut it. So I then used Blender 4.0 to render the BMW scene using the CPU and when using the CPU it completed it in 3 minutes and 45 seconds which is much faster than the 4 minutes and 59 seconds that we had seen previously. And so out of curiosity I once again ran the BMW test but rendered using the GPU just to see how fast we could potentially get it and it completed the render in 41 seconds which once again is much faster than the 1 minute and 2 seconds which we saw on the older version of Blender. It's basically around 30% faster. So that has been it for today's video. I will be uploading a video very soon in which I'll be comparing the 10 core GPU in this iMac to the 8 core in the entry model. So be sure to subscribe as I'm sure you don't want to be missing out on that. If you've got any questions or if there's anything that you'd like to see further tested on these machines then be sure to leave them down below in the comment section or alternatively you can hit me up on my social media links to which can be found down below in this video's description. Once again thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care and have a good one.